Hello loves, blessed Maybon, belated blessed Maybon. Happy fall, happy autumn. Today we're gonna do a non-witchy chat, so I'm not gonna be talking about tarot. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Maybon, a little bit about my witchy path, but today is the highly, highly, highly requested. You guys love seem to love these seasonally, so I'm always more than happy to do them. Um, books, makeup, candles edition of witchy chat. It's non-witchy, witchy chat with accoutrement. Yes. So happy fall, guys. I'm so excited for this time of year. I just feel so connected to my path and all just in love with the weather. And I feel mystical and just the dark feminine is doing all of those wonderful, delicious things. And the weather and nature herself is just perfectly lined up with that magic. So I am a happy, happy witch today and for this season. So I'm going to share a little secret with you guys. So this is my mug today. This is Vincent's mug. And he has very kindly allowed me to borrow it for this video. So thank you, Vincent, for allowing me to use your candy corn costume Halloween mug today. So a sip of tea. We'll start with that. So yeah, Maybon. Um there's been so like I felt such an energy of just needing to be a hermit in my home and rest lately especially with the transition from moving so I think we'll start with books because I have been reading a shit ton and I've been a little more novel focused than where I was at in the spring when I did my other non-witchy video I think I did one in the spring not this summer but anyhow I digress uh I've been a lot more in more in a novel mood um, and really specifically within the horror genre. So a lot of uh, the books that I'm going to talk about today are focused on the horror genre. So they might not be your cup of tea. But I've really, really been enjoying like just taking a trip away. So I will start. Let's see. Should we start with books? Yeah, let's start with books. We'll start with books. So also what I'm drinking for tea because you guys ask me a lot. I'm so Boring when it comes to tea. I love Yorkshire gold tea, which is like more caffeine than a cup of coffee in it. Um, I'm not a coffee drinker, believe it or not, guys. I only drink tea uh, and I pretty much only drink black tea with milk. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm pretty basic and I'm pretty happy that way. However, I do love a London fog if I go out. So I love, I love Earl Grey tea as well. So typically if you see me and I'm having tea, it's a black tea or an Earl Grey but I do love in the summer iced Thai uh, tea. The, the, you know, that more like that gorgeous, like red toned tea uh, that's just delightful and delicious. So I will do an iced Thai in the summer, but uh, an iced Thai tea in the summer, but I really, in general, I'm pretty boring. It's usually black tea or an Earl Grey. So anyhow, books, okay. But one biography that I'm still working my way through is The Patriarch. I talked about this, I think, at least, very, very least on Instagram, if not on YouTube. I'm still working through this. I mean, it's a couple thousand, not a couple thousand, but it's, it's almost a thousand pages. So I'm still working through this. And it's definitely, it's well written, but um, I'm not at the part yet that I'm really interested in. I'm still doing that, you know, the reading of, how we got to where we are. So I need, you know, so this is something that I read maybe 20 pages in, maybe 30 pages and I come back to. Um, so this is The Patriarch on the Remarkable Life and Turbulent Times of Joseph P. Kennedy by David Nassau. So I'm someone who likes to do research and I've been doing my research on RFK Jr. And so that's how I connected with this book. So that very enjoyable, but I'm still working my way through it. And honestly, I probably will be throughout the winter. I don't see, I'm not so engrossed in it. It's not like reading a biography on FDR for me, which would be like, I can't stop reading it. So that one, you know, taking my time with. Okay, so actually the next four are all horror genre. Oh, I did, no, I have one that's not. So I'll do that one next. So, okay, I think I've talked to you guys before on the channel when we do non-witchy chat videos that I love Anita Shreve's style of writing. I love her novels. When I was a teenager, um, Fortune's Rock and Sea Glass were those were just these two books that I felt like Anita accesses emotional storylines 
so well and she has passed. So I kind of save, I have a few books on my roster of hers that I still haven't read. And I save them for times when I really know that I just need a book that I can feel connected to and sink my teeth into. And so I did recently purchase Where or When, also by Anita Shreve. Um, and so I'm working my way through her. I look at through her works, but I still try, I'm trying to save a few because she has passed and there won't be any you know, more books coming from her. Um, I try to save them and savor them. So this one is about um, a man and a woman who were childhood sweethearts and then, you know, their lives have transpired and then they end up reconnecting. And it's about the story of them coming together in that way. So I don't know, I'm probably about 71 pages in. Side note, my bookmark is Vincent's super secret fun math facts. <laughs> So he makes me the cutest bookmarks. Um, so there is something more to Anita's work. Again, it's so emotionally driven and you end up just going on this ride with whoever is the focus of the storyline. And so I'm really in, but they're always truthful. Like Fortune's Rocks, the love story within Fortune's Rocks is so heartbreaking, but it's also so real for that time period, you know? So, and I love that she brings that. So you have to be in an emotional read mood, but if you are, uh, Anita Shreve, where or when it's, I'm enjoying it as much as I've enjoyed her other books and just feels like getting to hang out with a best friend that I haven't seen in a long time. You know, someone who's moved far away and we, we only get to visit occasionally. So this is my non-horror genre storyline. Okay, so the next few I've finished, there's only one that I haven't completely finished yet that I'm in the middle of reading, but all right. A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. This is horror genre at its finest. Sorry, I just about lost my books there. You need to be okay with cannibalism and you need to be okay with the horror genre to enjoy this. Also, serial killers are a part of this. But this is about a food writer who is also a serial killer and a cannibal and she kills men. And it's a woman. She's extremely intelligent. She's a psychopath and it's a fascinating read. I could not put this book down. It's so freaking good. I couldn't stop reading it. Like I couldn't. I started, I think I... I read it within like a few days, which right now with my schedule and Vincent's schedule is amazing that I, I couldn't, but I literally couldn't put it down. It was, it's so good. So I know it's been very popular. I was late to the show just because, you know, sometimes when everyone says something's great, you're like, mm, I don't know, is it really, or is everybody just saying it's great? This lived up to the hype. It's amazing. So A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. The, the descriptions of food, of human body parts, of um, the main protagonist's perspective are just decadent, over the top, and delicious in every way that you want to imagine, you know, the culinary world to be. So this did not disappoint. That This book was really, really good. I couldn't put it down. If you like that genre, I highly recommend it. You need to be okay with the horror genre to enjoy that. So if horror genre is not your jam, please don't pick it up. What Moves the Dead by T. T. Kingfisher. Another one I couldn't put down. This is a retelling of Poe's Fall of the House of Usher. It's very good. Very good. I was very on the fence because I love Poe. Obvi. Hello. Um, and my mother loved Poe back in the day before, you know, religion happened. So... Yeah, this, I was like really not sure if I was going to enjoy it. It was a very good retelling, very vibrant. And um, I should say it's like a vibrant description of the mutedness of rot and decay. Like it really pulled you into that world. And I have to say, yes, I am so basic, but the cover is really what pulled me in. I was like, worst case scenario, the cover is gorgeous and I will enjoy having it on my bookshelf just to look at. It lives up to the book cover. This book was really interesting. There's a second uh, installment coming and I am gonna pre-order that because I'm very excited to see what happens next. Really great retelling of a Poe story there with What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Um, the other book that I have finished is, and this book was so good. Again, that is a horror genre, obviously, because it's a Poe retelling. This is also a horror genre book as well. This is Looking Glass Sound by Catriona Ward. 
Wow. Okay. So the house on needless street is like the book that she wrote that Stephen King did a review for. And it was like huge pump, hugely pumped up. Right. And I guess the main character in that story is a cat. Right. And I was like, mm, I'm not really a cat person all that much. <sighs> Spoiler alert. Um, and I wasn't sure because of, again, all the hype, if I was going to enjoy that, but this, which is a, um, a story that takes place on the coastal line of Maine, which hello, racing's happy coastline of Maine as kind of like her homage to King for the kind review he gave her. Uh, the book takes place on the coastline of Maine. It's about um, a couple of kids and there's this serial killer and it's the story of like obsession and love. And then these women losing their lives as well that ends up happening all in tandem. And there's a little bit of magic sprinkled in, in, in an unexpected way. And it's not in a fairy tale pretty way. This book was another one that was very engrossing and I couldn't put it down. It's told from multiple character perspectives. So it really does keep you on the edge of the, your seat. And you're kind of not sure who's unhinged, what's reality and what's been told. Um, I don't wanna give too much away. You, you end up on the edge of your seat. This one was hard for me to put down as well. I read it mostly in the school pickup line waiting to pick up Vincent from school because I just couldn't, it was so engrossing. I didn't wanna be that far away from it. Also, the cover is gorgeous. Like this red is my life. Um, the cover is gorgeous. It takes place on the coastline in Maine. I was gonna love this book anyhow, but I will definitely be reading now The House on Needless Street because this book was told so well, so engrossing. And a very different voice than Chelsea G. Summers, um, but equally as much of a pull into the storyline. So this I do recommend if you've been on the fence about giving that one a try. I do think it's worth a read. I've really been enjoying it. And the book that I am working my way through right now is Negative Space by B.R. Yeager. It's very similar to House of Falling Leaves. Not that it's told in the same style, but more that you're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and it drags you in that way. It's a very different and unique read. It's about a bunch of teenagers and these murders that are happening. And there's some type of drug reference. So I'm about 129 pages in and there's something going on with a certain type of drug here. There's something definitely going on within the town. And it's one of those things where it's it's a mind fuck again. So if you're looking for something like that, that's gonna like totally pull you out of daily life and be a complete departure, then this is a great option. It is told in very short form perspective of like each of the kids, the teenagers. And so you're jumping from perspective very quickly. If you find that to be frustrating in writing style, you might not enjoy this. Not gonna lie, another book that I largely got because I was like, even if I don't like it, I fucking love this cover and it's kick ass, it's metal man. Uh, but it's living up to the, the book cover greatness so far, really enjoying this. And I ended up finding this because it was a recommendation on October Occult's, uh, one of her stories um, based on Scorpio placements. And I love House of Falling Leaves and that book was on there as well. So yeah, so totally purchased it because of that and the gorgeous cover and I'm really, really enjoying it. So if you've been, if you're looking for a, a, a horror genre for the fall season, um, those would be my recommendations. Those are the books I've been reading. I've been loving it. Nice escape from daily reality for me. This is going to be a very long video. <laughs> so uh, I hope you enjoy a chatty video because that's today. So yeah, so th I, that's definitely what I've been reading with my tea. Um, let's see. I have also really been, you know, I go like in and out with uh, red wine versus Prosecco because you all know that I'm a Prosecco girl, but I have really been enjoying um, a nice cab as I've gotten closer to the fall. Been in a cab mood, Cabernet mood. Um, and horror movie, uh, horror movies, horror books just really go well with, uh, with that vibe. Nice glass of red wine while you're reading about a cannibal. It's kind of perfect. So, okay, so those are books I've been reading. So should we do, let's do, let's do candles next. Okay, well, you guys know that I love October Occult. 
I have a discount code, which I will make sure I put in the description below. Um, so I do have a discount code with her candles because I've loved and raved about her candles so much that she's very kindly offered my viewers a discount because I know a lot of you have ended up being encouraged to candle shop with her uh, through my content, So, which I love. I it, fellow witches supporting each other in our community and just inspiring each other aesthetically and scent wise is amazing, right? Um, but it's the perfect time of year for October occult candles because, you know, I'm in like harvest forest witch vibes and she has a few that I'm uh, that are now I'm far enough along with having worked with her candles over a long period of time that like I know what my core candle scents are uh, when it comes to like seasonally what I want to use. And so right now, and this is like a newer scent that that she's offering, but I hope she keeps it standard in the collection because it's fucking amazing. And that one is Cottage Creature, Iced Gingerbread House, Brown Sugar, Molasses, and Embers. So I've said to you guys, like, I really like smoky, warm, musky scents. I'm not really a floral girl. Um, so you're kind of never going to see me in these videos talking about floral scents because it's just not really what works for me. I love musk and smoke and like that kind of like dense fog type of stuff. So, uh, but Cottage Creature is, and even like, I love molasses and I love gingerbread cookies. Um, like th this time of year, those are some of my favorite scents to actually be baking in the house with. Cause side note, I am also a baker. I do love to bake. It's one of my kind of secret little things I like to do just for me and Vincent. But this one is like, mm, it's more on the spice molasses side. And like, I love, I just love everything about her candles. They're so worth the investment. So, but anyhow, let me talk about the scent. So it's very on the spice side of molasses, which is what I really enjoy. It's not like vanilla sugar side of things. It's much more on the spice end of things. Oh man, I just got, this order just came in. That's why this hasn't been burnt yet. But I have burnt through one of these already because I love it so much, just like in preparation for the season. So yeah, mm, that one smells so good. So that one I've been, is one of my favorites. Um, you guys know, that horror movie night is Vincent's favorite candle that she makes. So I'm always ending up repurchasing that. It smells like buttered popcorn and all things wonderful about movie night. And I'm sure we all, for a lot of us, we remember being kids and having movie night at home. And it's definitely something as an adult, uh, I love that it's something that Vincent looks forward to. So horror movie night. Um, and then Midnight Society is like my number one favorite candle that she makes. Like that one I cannot live without. So I got that in this batch too. Um, there were, there were a couple others I wanted to share. Yeah. So the, where is it? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to save that one for last. So the harvest one, I ended up, I wasn't expecting to, but I really love her harvest candle. So it's just called the harvest. It's like everything apple orchard perfection. Fresh apple, cinnamon, nutmeg, crisp fall air, cedar wood. Like it's exactly what you think of when you think about harvest vibes. And actually I think Vincent and I are going to go apple picking this weekend and then I'm going to make an apple pie. So it's kind of perfect for this. And so this one is definitely one that I was like I need for the next couple months for sure. Um, and then I love her pagan candle. I be the witch of the woods. And the pagan candle, I'm always like torn between which one is my favorite because it's got that like cypressy, woodsy, pine type of vibe. And I think the pagan, why I chose to bring the, the pagan candle up here, well, number one aesthetic, right? Look at the moss. But this is like a nice segue from like fall into winter vibes. Mm. So this is earth magic, oak moss, green, herbaceous, amber, and soil. I am a hoe for a good amber scent. I'm not even going to lie. This, yeah, so this is like a nice in between, you know, winter into, uh, excuse me, fall into winter vibes. Like this candle is really nice for that. But I Be the Witch of the Woods is another great one if you want that like piney pitch, you know, lost in the woods on like a damp, foggy day type of vibe. Either of those two are great options. And then, okay. I'm, this is the one I'm most excited about and I have I haven't let her yet because I was saving recording this video till I received this package in the mail so October occult takes requests based on like your favorite movie or your favorite book especially you know if it's horror or witchcraft related 
And you guys know, because I shared with you, I think it was either late spring or early summer, that I have been obsessed with the Love Witch this year. Like aesthetic, style, everything. Like even today, it's like, I want to be the goth version of the Love Witch, you know? Like obsessed. I'm obsessed with that movie right now. I even ordered the director of that movie. She just published a romance novel. Um, which is like totally giving me Hammer Horror House vibes. So I actually pre-ordered that book too, because I was like, I've got to get it. Like I love the Love Witch so much. So anyhow, I requested a Love Witch candle. And so the, um, the, the cool, it's so fun to request a candle from October Occult because she just goes off and she crafts something and it's like completely uniquely your own, like my Dracula candle, which was the last I think that was the last candle I requested from her. I love it. And I burn it like very, I actually burn the request ones more from a ritual perspective than just like a daily burn candle. So I find that her candles do work very well for ritual work too. Side note, if you are a practicing witch, but um, the Dracula candle is just everything. I am like, I use that very specifically with very, very much purposefully and with focused intention. So this one has midnight blackberry, rose, oud, sugar, tonka, and love potion, of course. But my favorite thing, <laughs> my favorite, favorite, favorite part. Okay, look at the, ins okay, so if you watch the movie, I think you'll understand how perfect what October Occult put inside is. Look at that. You've I got what appears to me to be smoky quartz, which is one of my favorite crystals to work with. And then look at the skull. And the color, all of it is like so 70s Love Witch vibes. It's so freaking beautiful. I am I am obsessed like to the point where I almost don't want to burn it at all because it's so gorgeous. And it actually smells really good. It's not too much rose. You really get the oud and the blackberry. Mm. Oh, it smells so good. I'm so, ah, I love placing special requests. And she just, every time she knocks it out of the park, there isn't a single special request candle I've ordered from October Occult that I haven't loved. So those are my October Occult candles for the fall season. Again, I do have a discount code with her. So please feel free to take advantage of that if you want to order. Um, she doesn't use harsh chemicals. You know, she does the wonderful wood burning wicks. It's made, you know, especially handmade by a fellow witch. Um, the candle wax that she chooses is a better, safer, healthier burn. Just across the board, her candles are better than, you know, most of the, the candles that, that we purchase from like mainstream mass produced companies. So yeah, I'm so excited to use this one. I'm so, so excited. Okay. So those are my October occult candles. The other candles that I've been using are, as you guys know, I pretty much do October Occult and Makers of Makers of Wax Goods. I like their candles if I'm going to go more mass produced. And they did a fall birchwood version. I like their birch scents. And this one has like a little bit of pumpkin. And the rest of it is that smoky birchwood scent that they're known for. And it comes in this gorgeous pumpkin-y toned um, glass case whatever jar glass jar jeez words racing uh so this yeah this one I've been burning a lot as well and I really like this one and then the other one that I have been burning from them is their pumpkin and smoke one this is this is a little more on like the warm nutmeg pumpkin side of things Side note for maker, uh, makers of wax goods, I actually don't like the, anything that they do that's too vanilla or pumpkin-y typical because they go like super sweet, almost like to where it gives you a headache when you burn it. I just want to be honest about that. But I have found that the pumpkin and smoke one is a, a little bit more, um, it's a little bit less sweet and more on the smoke end of things. So if you're like me and you find that those like vanilla cookie scents that are too heavy on the vanilla um kind of give you a headache you might find that this is a good option for you but again that's why I love October occult candles because even when she does do those kind of candy more bakery focused scents they're not too sweet when they burn and I don't get a headache so I would say of the two if you tend to get headaches if the candle scent is too sweet I would go October occult even over makers of wax goods okay that was candle talk. You guys know I always have a candle burning. Um, I really feel like 
it's so intrinsic to fire element for me and to fire element magic as a witch. I think there's nothing that candle magic doesn't amplify and just make better. And there's something about the, the ritual of lighting a candle, you know, that pause for reflection. I think like one of my favorite things to do in the morning is my light a candle, do my daily draw in front of my altar, journal a little bit. Like that's just oh, the best way to start my day for me. It makes me so happy. So, okay. I've rambled enough about books and candles. Let's talk makeup because I know you guys want to talk makeup. You guys always want to talk makeup with me. So, and I hope this isn't too boring because a lot of what I'm using is similar to what I was using last year. But I've really ridden the Oxblood Wine Deep Warm Toned Reds for this entire year. Um, and then these kind of like acidic grungy greens with these warm toned browns as far as my makeup goes. That's really like been my sweet spot. Um, and I haven't let up at all this year. I'm still feeling the vibe. So like today I am wearing, this is by Our Darling and it's their Morbid Desires liquid lipstick and that's what I'm wearing for lipstick today but typically it's been like Midnight Fox by KVD which you guys know I've been obsessed with or Jeffree Star's Bite My Lip or Unicorn Blood by Jeffree Star any of those kind of tones have just been like where it's at for me for the first time it's the first time that I've gone a long while not wanting to go back to my straight up scarlet red um I've just really been feeling the Oxblood warmer tones. So I've also been thinking about changing my hair color again, but that's another video. We'll see. But anyhow, so yeah, so lip color wise, this type of tone has really been speaking to me. And um, I can highly recommend the Our Darling Liquid Lipsticks. Um, I got this because of one of my dearest friends. She recommended the brand that she had been trying them. And I do really like Our Darling Cosmetics. So I would say Motet's Dom, Our Darling Cosmetics, Melt Cosmetics and um, Give Me Glow Cosmetics are pretty much my favorite makeup brands right now. Um, you guys know lip, lip, liquid lipstick wise, Jeffree Star, his uh, liquid lipsticks are kind of like my touchstone because they wear so well for me, but I haven't found his eyeshadow palettes to really be speaking to me this year. Um, I'm not really a rainbow toned palette person. So, um, and he's really been heavy and strong with the rainbow spectrum palettes this year. So I haven't felt called to purchase any of his palettes, but you guys know I do love his liquid lipsticks, but like Motet's Dom, um, Our Darling Cosmetics, Give Me Glow and Melt Cosmetics are pretty much where it's at for me. I'm, I'm, I'm like really happy with, with who I go, who are my go-tos for makeup. And I do like supporting independently produced because I love supporting small businesses. I'm one myself. I love the idea of supporting someone who's also out there trying to bring their passion into reality. And I do think, um, as far as the eyeshadow palettes go, I found I get really good quality for the most part from indie brands. So like, to me, it's, it's a no brainer with that. So, okay. I'm just blabbing on now. So what I've been using, cause so you would, you guys would just giggle at how many, uh, emails and private messages I get for makeup. <laughs> But I am going to say, I don't know if I shared this in a previous video or not, but I'll just reshare it here. If you want to get this really matte, matte, deep black, um, About Face has their fluid eye paint in Art of Darkness. And I use this as a base with, for the most part, the black from the Gemini palette, which is Bonnie. So I just put that over that. Like, that's what I have today. So if you are looking for my hack for that, that's what I do. It helps with the creasing and it makes it deep, deep black and it stays black all day. So if you are looking for something to help give you that really intense black smoky eye, I do strongly recommend this. And I think you can get this at Ulta, um, which is, I believe that's what I did. I think I just ordered that online. So as far as my um, makeup pal eye makeup palettes that I've been using every day. It's been Melt Cosmetics. I know I'm so boring right now. It's always the same thing, but the Gemini palette I use every single fucking day. The Dark Matter palette I use every day. And then I did purchase the 420 palette because they had a sale. And this one is gorgeous too, especially for this time of year. Like, look at those colors, guys. So yeah, obsessed. So I just want to share, because I, again, so many of you ask, like this palette right here, the Gemini palette, 
is what I use every day. So anytime I wanna do the grungy dark greens, I use these and then I can go in with the warm browns. What I typically do, which I did not do today, but I do typically do is I use the dark color and then I do um, one of the shimmers, like for instance, the goals shimmer in the middle of the eye. Like I do a halo smoky eye basically, except where I do things a little bit differently is then I put the glitter on the, this inner corner instead of the center. So um, it just seems to work well with my eye shape uh, and recording and things like that when I'm, you know, being me out in the world. Um, that type of eyeshadow style seems to really be working, especially as I am uh, getting older. I'm really enjoying how it works for my eye shape and my skin. So that's what I do. I use the Gemini palette pretty much every single day. Uh, the Dark Matter palette is a great all-arounder though. And their shimmer called Eclipse, this one right here, I use in my inner eye corner every single day. But this is a really nice like all rounder. If you're just looking for one eyeshadow palette that's going to do it all, this is a really great option. And this red color, it's based on their original palette, which I used to have. It was a stackable palette and I had it and ended up losing it in one of my moves. But um yeah, it was to die for. So that one is called, I think it's Enigma. So wait, so this is Gleam. I always reverse it. It's so confusing. That is what I use on my inner corner. And then Enigma, I also will use as a blush too. It's really gorgeous, like deep redwood tone. Um, absolutely gorgeous. So, but the 420 palette's been fun to play around with. So the other two palettes that I've been using, I'm almost done guys. You've been hanging out with me for a while. I know, but the other two palettes I've been kind of obsessively using, uh, Nomad Cosmetics Hudson Valley palette. Oh my God, guys, if you, when you're in a fall mood, like this is everything and they have their, their, uh, color payoff not quite as intense as Give Me Glow Cosmetics, but it does have that long wear ability. So I do, I really do like Nomad Cosmetics and that's another indie brand. So, but this palette is just like, if you like fall colors and you get inspired in the fall, I think you would enjoy that palette. This one though, I recommend strongly, strongly, even over like the Hudson Valley palette. Like if you are like, if you were to say to me, I can only invest in two palettes this fall racing, what would you get? Um, Melt Cosmetics Gemini palette and then Give Me Glow Cosmetics Haunted Pumpkin palette because you can do so much with either of these and they are Halloween kind of fall themed. So this palette is everything but these blending shades are it as well. So even if you wanted to do a neutral look you could still pull it off with this palette. And you guys asked me so much about the shimmer shadows that I use in the center of the Halo Smoky Eye. And Give Me Glow Cosmetics does have the best ones of them all. I will say that. Even over Melt's um, shimmers, Give Me Glow Cosmetics does have the best. So this palette is insane. I fucking love that palette. I use that one all the time. And the other thing I wanted to share, last but not least, because this is the blush that I've been wearing like basically this entire year, I can't stop, won't stop, is the Twin Flame blush from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. Oh my God, look at it. It's like everything, warm toned and witchy. So yes, this is what I've been using for blush. Still, still obsessed with it. This is really, has really intense color payoff. So if you do purchase any of their blushes, because I have a few of them, just know that you want to like, Gently dip your brush in the blush, tap it off on the back of your hand before you apply to your cheeks, or you're going to end up with clown makeup on. Like it's that much of a color payoff. But the thing that is nice about that is that you can blend it up intensity wise. You know, you can go like this style or you can go a uh, new romantic 80s blush if you wanted to with this for sure. So yeah, these are, this is what I've been using and loving as far as like daily racine life. You guys know I love this time of year, so I'm just feeling inspired and witchy, and uh, it's so nice to be in the woods, I will not lie, I'm really enjoying, I mean, I, we were in the woods before, but like, we're even a little bit more remote now, and it's so nice to just be out in the forest and be a forest witch. I may not be a green witch, but I am a forest witch, so I hope you are all having a wonderful fall. Blessed Maybon, if you have observed the Sabbath that just passed over the weekend. 
um, yeah, let me know what candles you guys are burning, what books you're reading. Give me some inspiration. And especially if you're in a horror genre loving book nerd like me, let me know what you've been reading so I can find some new titles to check out myself as well. But I hope you're all doing well out there in the world. I am sending you as always so much love and many blessings and I will see you in the next video.